You look terrible. Thank you. Oh, uh, Olivia Newton John? Debbie Harry. You know, Blondie. What's wrong with you? The usual, John. Yes. Uh, no, actually. Uh, could I please get the other uh, banana muffin? And a double deck of cheesecake, the chocolate fudge cookies, the, the strawberry cream pie with extra cream, please. You know what? Just, just give me anything with the word fudge in it. That'd be great. Thank you. Molly? Coffee. What's going on? Well, you know how much I love you, right? And? And so, there's something that I gotta tell you. And it's gonna sound a little um, surprising. Yeah. And you're really not gonna like it. Yeah, I'm getting that I'm not gonna like it. But I don't want you to, like, slip out on me. Just shut up and talk. See, now I don't want to tell you because... Speak. I'm not who you think I am. Officer. You again, huh? Well, that figures. Have we met? Wrote your ticket last week, speeding on Federal. You driving a 69 Mustang. 68, actually. I, I traded her in. For a 69 GTO? This bad boy's got 350 horsepower, stock off the shelf. Say what? What'd you have in that Mustang? 394 barrel? Yeah, but she only had 320, and that was tops. I guess you could have slapped a three-carb intake on it. Those lunar manifolds ain't worth a damn, though, huh? Yeah, right. What's your name again? Steve McQueen. Yeah, and I'm Allie McGraw. Cut the shit, turtleneck. Give me a license. Harry James Barber. Your real name's Harry. Harry James Barber. And you changed your name because of a bunch of speeding tickets. I changed my name because... Because why? Because the FBI's looking for me eight years ago. I robbed a bank in California. Bullshit. That's the biggest bank heist in US history. Look it up.
Bobby Lowman's here. Papa got reamed big time by Nixon. Had to drop trousers, bend over the warden's desk for a good dose of tricky dicky to get out of the pen. Fuck Nixon. Exactly. That's the whole idea. I'm gonna rip off the president of the United States. It doesn't get any bigger or better than that. How much are we talking here? Could be as much as 30 million. Hold on a sec. Does Hoffa know you're pitching this to us? What Jimmy Hoffa knows or doesn't know is for him to know, not you. I just want to make sure it's solid information. I told you, it's sterling fucking silver. Our guy was in the room when the White House coppers were shaking down the dairy board for off-the-book campaign contributions. I even uh, got a little souvenir. It's for you. Keep it. I'll be waiting for your call. Seems too good to be true. Why would Bobby make up shit like this? It just don't compute. I mean, everyone knows Nixon's gonna win re-election hands down, right? Why would he put all this bag money in a bank in California? Because he's a crook, and crooks don't know how to stop when they're ahead, so it computes perfectly. We hit the bank, take the 30 mil, and Nixon can't do squat because the money's filthy dirty. Seems like the president of the United States could do whatever the fuck he wants to do. He's got the CIA, the FBI, the ATF, and the IRS. It's like an alphabet soup enema. No, thank you. I'm out. It's the commander-in-chief who's going to be shitting in his pants, Paulie, not us. Jesus, I know you fucking hate Nixon. He's a cocksucker and a motherfucker and a bullshit artist. Yeah, I know. I've heard this already. Nixon's I've... hosed the steel companies here in town. He's trying to flush the unions down the crapper. He's out there killing college kids with fucking M16s, bombing naked little Cambodian children, running around the fucking rice paddies, and he's cramming 200,000 American boys into a fucking meat grinder called Vietnam. This isn't personal, Enzo. Oh, no? I didn't know that. We're professionals. We don't know shit about California. Why don't we just stick to our own backyard? Life is too short. We're not getting any younger. Stop. Stop with the we're not getting any younger bullshit, okay? You want to retire? Go fucking retire. But I'm not giving up this kind of action to go play bingo in the basement of St. Ignatius. Mm -mm. Not me. I'm just saying, we're not hurting for cash flow. We got a lot of business here. $30 million. I'd say business is looking up. That's my brother, Tommy. He just got back from Vietnam. I didn't know you had a brother. Eric, Enzo wants to see you. Nearly 40,000 American soldiers have died in the Vietnam War. And despite promises... Yes, ma'am! What is that thing? No, don't, don't, don't touch. It's a memento mori clock. A what? means remember to die. It's from the 1700s, and it's worth about 17 grand. Does it work? It will when I'm done with it. You wanted to see me? Yeah, come here. Take a look at this. This is a burglar alarm from a bank in California. It's something I've never dealt with before. I want you to look around town and see if you can find one. If you do, take photos. You got it? Yes, ma'am. Because if you fuck this up, you'll be stocking vending machines for the rest of your natural life. Oh, and Harry, keep a low profile.
the fuck? What the fuck is that? Even know what low profile means? What? I said get photos. Huh? Photos. Photos wouldn't have told us that the alarm ran on batteries. Now we know that got the electricity. What a touch. Come here. Huh. You got balls. Torch the car. What? This this is a Pontiac GTO. This is gonna be a classy car someday. That's great. Always torch the car after a job. I just stole it last week. Really? Lesson fucking learned. Brian, you got something in your eyes, huh? Turn in your uniform. What's that mean? It means turn in your uniform. What am I supposed to do? I mean, how am I gonna get another job? I got speeding tickets that have gone to warrant by now. Yeah, I gotta take care of those, because you can't drive for me without standing warrants. What do you mean? I'm in? Yeah, you're in. Can I hug you? <laughs> Should have my fucking head examined. You won't regret this. I already do. Uncle Enzo, um, what about Tom? Don't press your luck. Round everybody up, class is in session. There's the motion detector. That's what triggered it when Harry ripped it off the wall. Look, see that? No wires. Works from a radio signal. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it took me five minutes to pick the lock on the bench here. There's no way that I can do that hanging off the roof of the bank. I don't know why we're gonna bust our balls with some pie in the sky bank job in some fucking lagoon. It's Laguna Niguel, okay? It's Spanish for what, what, something. I don't fucking know. Just, just stop it though we don't need this job okay? you just said you just can't pick the lock upside down how are you gonna shut off the alarm i'm working on it Shh. let it do better than that if you expect me to back you up i know how you can do it you got some stuff here. Really? Yeah, wipe your yeah. mouth it's disgusting what when tommy got back from nam i went and met him in california and he had this buddy that worked at a surf shop right and in his shop, he had this shit in an aerosol can, and he'd spray it in the surfboards, into the dents. Anyway, I, it had come out goopy, right? And then after a few seconds, it'd expand, swell up like crazy. And then after a couple of minutes, it would go rock hard. So they could shape the surfboard, you know? Uh, trim it, sand it, you know? Uh, the surfboards look like brand new. Okay, so we all know how to fix a surfboard now. What the fuck does that have to do with the alarm? Squirt the goopy shit through the vent, let it expand, harden. I'll stop the dinger from hitting the back. Son of a gun. <laughs> I like this kid. Molly? Honey? Come out here, sweetie. Go away. Okay, I'm coming in. Do not come in. Seven years we've been together, and this is how you break up with me? Wait, what? You're too chicken shit to say you're breaking up with me, so you come up with this bullshit story instead. I'm telling you the truth. Oh, sure, you're wanted by the FBI. You know what? If you want to leave, fine. Just leave. Just don't make me into a fool. Uh, 
I was in the post office yesterday and I saw my own face staring back at me. You colored your hair? Yeah. And you, you, you curled it? Yeah, to, to look like Steve McQueen. Well, I guess there's a first time for everything. Can we please go back to the date? Why, so you can lie to me some more? I'm not lying. You lied to me from the moment you said, hello, my name is John Baker. So don't tell me you're not lying. Who are you? Slow down. We don't need no speeding tickets. Nobody knows we're in California. Let's just keep it that way. Hey, if you see any movie stars, pull over. Yeah, could use some Hollywood poontang. Like that hippie chick on Mod Squad. Wouldn't mind slipping her the high hard one. Hippie chicks? Shit, no. If I like Terry Armpits, I'd be a homo. But you know who I do like? I love that girl. What's her name? That actress on, uh... The show, we're all in the family. Edith Bunker. Jesus Christ, no, not Edith Bunker. It's the fucking daughter, the one with the big tits. Goldie Horn. Not Goldie Horn. She's on laughing. I got bigger tits than her. I'd nail Goldie Horn. Tits or no tits, I bet she's a real spinner. Just fucking forget about it. Sally Struthers. Sally Struthers, there you go. I'm Sally Smothers. Jesus Christ, somebody put a bullet in my head and put me out of my fucking misery back here. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's it. Knock it off. Come on, drive the car. Just sit back and enjoy the scenery, acting like a bunch of children. Just look out the window. Where you got the ocean? They got palm trees and everything. My God. Palm trees look like candles on a birthday cake when they catch fire. See that building? Just the other side of the golf course. That's the bank. Yep. Good job, kid. Yeah. Thanks, Hans. Talk about a hole in one. <laughs> what the fuck is that vat for? We gonna crush some grapes? That's a hot tub. What the fuck is a hot tub? Look at this, boys, like a picture fucking postcard. No shit, huh? After this job, I'm gonna get me a fucking hot tub. Once we're in the crawl space, I'll cut the direct lines to the alarms and sensors. Cool. Yeah. Pauly will drill into the vault ceiling to place the dynamite. That is so cool. Yeah. And we're going to blow right through that thing. Now, the burlap bags, Tommy will fill with soil from the planters, and that will be used for... Uh, to muffle the sound of the blast. Yes, and to direct the blast downward, not up. And if everybody does their job, we should be looking at Nixon's milk money within an hour. <laughs> you ever read that Jonathan Livingston Siegel? Yeah, I heard that's a pretty good book. You know, you'll never look at those cocksucking birds the same again, I'll tell you that much. Smart birds. <sighs> you have no idea. What the fuck? Hey, motherfuckers! Sorry, I shanked my drive. I'll shank you, you sherbet colored asshole! Hey, fuck you! Fuck me! Fuck you! I'll shove that fucking putter up your fucking ass! It's a driver, you moron! Jesus Christ! What the hell are you guys doing? You're supposed to be laying low? Well, you gotta keep your cool, Ray. All of you. 
Harry's the only one here with a modicum of intelligence. What's a modicum? Get out of that thing, will you? Everybody get dressed. We're going to look at the bank. Remember the bank? Bank manager says they leave at 5.30 p.m. on Friday and don't return until Monday at 9 a.m., so the break-in could have occurred Good morning, in morning, sir. Good morning, sir. What do you think that is? It's not bird shit. Whatever it is, it should have shut that alarm up, didn't it? The front and back doors were still locked. The alarm never tripped. No prints, no witnesses. The bank manager said he didn't notice anything unusual until he opened up the vault. Southern California. Why break a sweat, chopping a hole in the roof when all you need is a starter pistol and a freeway map? I'm not sure I follow, sir. We're the bank robbery capital of the world. For two reasons. On-ramps and off-ramps. I mean, the last time I saw a ball job like this, Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin were doing it. In that movie. Ocean's Eleven. I never saw it, sir. You gotta get out more, sir. Yes, sir. I was here on Saturday. What were you doing here? Sam plays Little League. This is the pickup spot for the away team. I've been doing double duty ever since Karen and I, we decided to take a little break. Uh, you didn't notice anything when, when you were here? How do you blast a three-foot diameter hole in concrete without anyone noticing anything? Well, you got to be very good, very lucky, or both. That's the only thing standing between us and Nixon's milk money. 18 inches of the concrete and cream cheese. Nah, Paul, you could do it in your sleep. He's going to fucking wake up a few folks when he sets that shit off. And what about this joint next door? Looks pretty quiet to me. Throw in a few extra sandbags, no big deal. Gennarlis. What kind of name is that? Italian? It's not Gennarlis, it's gnarly. You know, like, uh, extreme. Radical. Balls out. Balls out? Huh. Oh, fuck that shit. I ain't going to no gay ball. Come on, let's go around back. Shit is gonna be going on when we're doing the job. Come back when they close. What? 1 a.m.? That only gives us four hours before sunrise. Maybe a little noise is just what we need. I never trusted nobody before. I know. We're not open till now. Give 
Give me a boiler man. I said we're close. They're burying my husband at the cemetery across the road, so I'm gonna need a boiler maker and a dollar for the quarters. Miss. You knew. Yeah. Started last week. Sorry for your loss. I'm not. I just put all my eggs in the wrong basket. You ever done that? Yeah. You could say that. He cheated on me a year ago. He was my best friend. You know, I never did trust him. How'd he pass away? He didn't exactly pass away as much as he passed on the right. He rear-ended a flatbed truck parked on the side of the road. He was drunk. Drunk and decapitated. You know, he wasn't exactly still my husband. I left him. I moved back home with my folks would have been my ex-husband. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm the widow Murphy and I get the life insurance. Ain't karma grand? You believe in karma? Yeah, consequences. Good always equals good and bad always bites you in the ass. You just never know when. Hey guys. You a new guy? Yeah. Uh huh. Molly Murphy coming here? Who's that? Young woman, black dress. It's kind of scrawny looking. It's just me, officer. I mean, we're not even open yet. Okay. Well, if you see a chick in a black dress come in here, you tell her there's a funeral service waiting for her across the road. Scrawny girl. What do I see? Thanks. 
So you're gonna go to the funeral? I don't know. I really just want to keep hiding. Do you know the old Vogue Theater? Of course. Well, I rent the apartment upstairs. I think it used to be the manager's office or something. That's the key to the side door. And this is the key to my car. It's, it's parked out the front. Take it. It's really nice. Um, put this on my tab. Do you have a tab? No. What did you say your name was? Mm. John Baker. John Baker. I'm Molly Murphy. It's nice to meet you. Is that seat taken? Yes. I thought I'd find you uh, passed out with an empty bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I'm not really much of a drinker. You were doing pretty good earlier. I didn't know what else to do. You know, I used to come here every weekend. Yeah? Mm -hmm. When did the place shut down? About five years ago, I saw Bonnie and Clyde here. Three times on the same day. Did you ever see it? Yeah, yeah. Just the one, so. Or I could watch it a thousand more times. Why do you like it so much? Well, it's one of the greatest love stories of all time. They were fearless. Always staying one step ahead of the law. Warren Beatty would do anything to keep Faye Dunaway safe, and she would do anything for him. Right until the end. Well, that's love. It's romance. I'm gonna have sex with you. Not today. I'm not exactly sure when. I'll let you know. Cool. It's my new number one rule. No more lies. It's <laughs> a pretty good rule. Yeah, you don't need any others if you got that one. I guess not.
Look at this thing. Last time I saw a shit box like this was in a pawn shop in Cincinnati. What a joke. All right, here we go. I made a radio. Hey, anything on this scanner? A lot of fucking peeps. Sounds like they only got one patrol car working and he's writing a ticket for an illegal bonfire on the beach. <laughs> drilling so I up the charge. It's a slam miscalculation. Don't go shitting yourself. Shut up. I think we're getting a call. Yes, fuck. Patrol guy's on its way to check the bank, fuck. Christ, it wasn't that loud. Let's get out of here. Sit tight. Harry, take a walk out front and see what you see. Take a radio. Tommy, help him with the ladder. Must be a thousand fucking boxes down here. Nah, five, six hundred tops. We're never gonna get all these fuckers popped open. We came here to personally rob the President of the United States of America, and we are not leaving until we do. Harry, Tom, come on. We should start with the big boxes first. No, every box in order on each wall, starting there. We're never gonna be able to squeeze 30 million in these little boxes. Hey, Paul, it's not all gonna be in cash. These ain't drug dealers. These guys are slick, they're politicians. We're talking bearer bonds, offshore accounts, cashier's checks. That's how these cocksuckers roll. That's it. Look 
big trooper ads up the wazoo. Hey, hey, Diamonds, too. Some pretty swanky shit going on. It's like fucking Christmas. Wow. All right, wow. half an hour before sunrise. Let's bag it up. We cleared over four million that night, but we still hadn't found Nixon's money. And Enzo, he wouldn't stop until we did. But with the bank closed for the weekend, we still had Saturday and Sunday night to go. So let me get this straight. You guys set out to rob Nixon. President of the United States. Seemed like a good idea at the time. And you thought you could get away with that? How exactly? Because it was dirty money. See, we figured Nixon couldn't do nothing to us. He figured them out. We were wrong. I can get my own coffee. Thanks. Yes, sir. Sharon, how long were you on a desk before they let you into the academy? Two years, sir. You were the first female through, right? One of two. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I was the first two. A lot of pressure. This is my own. Um, a fuel office in 10 years. Karen said uh, that she never wanted to move again. It's ironic, you know. I give up a lot to, to do this. A lot. Don't want to give up everything, though. Gotta find balance. I haven't been able to find it yet, but I'm optimistic. Sir, um, I, uh, I thought about what you said about getting out more. I got tickets for The Godfather. Have you seen it? Uh, twice. Sir? Right. Deputy Director Felt is here. Felt's in the office. He just came in from Washington unannounced, and he's not alone. <laughs> How are you? Confused. Sir. So am I. The inventory of the safety deposit boxes supplied by the bank seems somehow incomplete. Apologies, Howard. Let me save you some time, sir. There's 456 boxes were smashed open. Some of them still contain cash and jewelry. The burglars were obviously looking for something specific. Any ideas? Not yet. But I'm well equipped to handle this investigation on my own, sir. Of course you are. Then, with all due respect, why have an additional 100 agents been assigned to my case? The 
There's a very high level of interest in this case, Howard. Oh, Mr. Hoover? Higher. Higher. This incident appears to have created some consternation in the Oval Office. Can you tell me? I can't. I haven't been offered an explanation myself. I find it very hard to believe, sir. I'd imagine you would. There's a bumper crop of secrets in Washington these days, Howard. That's why I need you to solve this case as quickly as possible so we can find out what the hell it is they're not telling us. I've got to get back. You report directly to me. Yes, sir. I should have taken that coffee. Oh, we're out of coffee. And desks, and telephones, and toilet paper. I finally get something interesting, and they, they, they want to take it from me. Between this and San Clemente, there are more federal agents here than in Washington. San Clemente? Yes, sir. The president is spending his vacation there, so. The Western Lands. What is it? San Clemente is 10 miles away from that bank. What does that have to do with a bank job? Maybe nothing. Maybe everything. What's the golden rule of a homicide investigation? Motive. Motive. So, why this bank and why these safe deposit boxes? Because they knew what they were looking for. Exactly, they knew. Do you have any um, customers without a state address? As a matter of fact, I think so. Let's have a look. Let's check it out. Here we go. C.W. Coulson with a P.O. box in Arlington, Virginia. Arlington? All right. I want you to do the background check personally on Mr. Coulson. Yes, sir. Good. Sharon, have you been following this Watergate thing? Yes, sir. What do you think, Bonnie? From what I read in the papers, that crew seems like a bunch of amateurs. Yeah. You think our case has something to do with that circus? I don't know. But what I do know is that the last time the Bureau assigned 100 agents a single investigation was when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. I swear to God, the next time I think I'm going to fall in love, I'm going to fall off a bridge instead. Of all the small towns in the country, why did you pick Deerwood? <laughs> well, actually, I didn't pick it. It kind of picked me. You see, I was driving through town and the water pump in my truck went out. By the time I got it fixed, I had a job at the Deer Meat Tavern. Then I met you. You stayed in Deerwood because of me? What do you think? Don't mention that we met at the Deer Meat Tavern. <laughs> what are you doing? The Great Escape. So you tell them that, uh, that we met in town. Whereabouts? Uh, Dairy Queen. What happened to you, no lie rule? This is the exception that makes the rule. And listen, uh, maybe don't bring up uh, Nixon or Watergate. My dad's a Republican. Oh, and he hates Billie Jean King and Phil Donahue and Jane Fonda. Are you a Pittsburgh Pirates fan? I don't have to be. No, that's good. My dad loves the Pirates. Molly Wires. Are... Hey, everyone. Hey. Go Pirates. 
this is John Baker. He's new in town, so don't act like the SWAT team and scare him off, okay? <laughs> no, no, come on. Come on on down here. Welcome to our home. John, right? John, is it? Just call me Jerry. Everybody does. Look, everybody, there's fever in the funk house now. I promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. Rose, nice. Rose. Mom, Rose. All right. Stop How about a beer? Did, we, did you oh my stand God. a beer? All right. You want a beer? Oh, don't even start. He thinks he's Steve McQueen. <laughs> Look at that. So what do you think? Are you kidding? He's a doll. And your father seems to like him too. Yeah? And he's a Pirates fan. How about that? How about that? Do so you think it's okay if I sleep with him? Oh, Molly. What? You shouldn't be asking me questions like that. Well, I got a new rule. No lies. And what good are rules if you don't use them, right? No. <laughs> if you want to. Sure, why not? You're a big girl. I love you. <laughs> Just don't use your new rule on your father or your sister. You know how they are. I love you, Mom. I heard you the first time. I'll be sticking around for a while. Well, you better. Or I'll have my dad arrest you for impersonating my boyfriend. Really? I'm your boyfriend now? If you don't screw it up. I screwed it up, didn't I? You think, John? John. Harry. Steve McQueen, I don't even know what to call you anymore. Mr. Nixon says emphatically that the White House is in no way involved in the burglary and bugging of the Democratic headquarters, and he'll have no further comment on that matter. It's a beautiful morning. motherfucking piece of shit work. Push the lever to the right. What lever? There's only buttons. This lever. Look at you. The real Thomas Edison, boy genius, huh? What? You don't have a dishwasher at home? Yeah, I got a dishwasher at home. I married a fuck nuts. Hey, what's the mirror for, Uncle Enzo? It's a burglar alarm for burglars, Tommy. If I don't see a reflection, it means somebody's found our hole in the roof. And then we get the hell out of Dodge. I don't think you meant to use a knife. Scissors don't work. Pieces are too thick. Hey, I'm uh, gonna catch a matinee. You know which one? Get away. Again? You wanna come? No, no. No finish us. You sure? Yeah. I've seen the getaway six times. Thomas Grant of Air 8. The Magnificent Seven, I've seen. Well, seven. <laughs> You want to know my favorite? The movie that I love the most. Bullet.
told Mr. Wiggler that Steve McQueen's your hero. And next week, he's gonna play Bonnie and Clyde. Since I've been helping out and stuff. You okay? Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with me. I guess I'm just happy. There's nothing wrong with being happy. <laughs> I am. Uh, I just wish I came here before. I guess it wasn't exactly nothing, right? Okay, keep going. Okay, so we went back on a Saturday night, and that's when it all started to go uh, sideways. Hands up. So you read me? Yeah, Rick, what's going on? Unmarked car just pulled in the back. Coming up. Keep everything quiet. I can fucking smell an unmarked car. It's a cop. Calm down. Anything on the scanner? No, not a goddamn thing. It's a cop. I take him out, and we get out of here before anyone else shows up. We're bank burglars, not cop killers. It's either that or we grow wings and fly the fuck away. Okay, okay. If it's a cop, but only if it's a cop and no headshot. You can't be serious. Got no vote here. What are you doing here anyway, Harry? Just make sure you give this son of a bitch a chance to survive. It's an Uzi, no promises. Up and get off this roof double time. You got me, Paulie first, then Tommy. Harry, me, Ray. Just spread out and get back to the house as fast as you can. Why don't I just say right now? What is somebody need I to said you got no vote. You do as I say, or you're going off the roof. Head first. Is that clear you got that? Hold on. Hey, hey. What the fuck is this? Where are these assholes? Somebody want to tell me what the fuck is going on? It's a little league game. Shit. Son of a bitch. I'm gonna shot the fucking Little League. Mark, calm down. Come on. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. Don't worry about it. You gonna hit today? Don't worry. Come on, you get the next one. That's when I knew that I was in over my head. That I'd made a terrible mistake.
Let's finish this. I, I'm so full, I can't eat anymore. The story. Finish the story. So it was Sunday night. The third time returning to the bank. Ray, what's up? It's getting busy out here. It's definitely a Monday morning, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what fucking day it is. Pack it up, boys. Bring it all up the ladder. We're done. Since when do you run this crew? Since you lost your goddamn fucking mind. And to be honest, I don't think your goddamn fucking 30 mil is here. Even if it is, it's time to go. Oh, Nixon. Hey, we did our best. These guys like him, they always come out on top. They always come out on top. They're gonna make fucking statues of him, and they're gonna plaster his dog-ass face on first-class fucking stamps. And guys like me and you, he is a bigger crook than we will ever fucking be. Maybe someday someone will nail something on him. Okay? <gasps> Hope springs eternal, right? Never fucking happened, Polly. Never. Let's just get the fuck out of here. It's a Twelve million dollar boat looks like, boys. Let's stop Vegas. Lake Havasu. Get that money in there. Hurry up. Boom. Polly, did you get that bleach in the drains? All done, boss. Ray, all the countertops, right? Yep. Spick and span. Harry. Here's your cut in Tommy's. I'll see you back in Youngstown. you got there? Baseball cards. It's from the bank. Enzo said I could have it. Any gum? No. It's just cards. Jesus Christ. Well, oh, I got a Johnny Bench MVP card in here. Good, Tommy. $12 million heist, and all we get is 10 k and some gumless baseball cards. Let's go, Tommy. Charles Wendell Colson, AKA Chuck Colson, date of birth 10 16, 1931. The P.O. box is actually a mail drop a couple of miles from his house in Arlington. He married twice, three kids. He did a hitch in the Marine Corps. It's quite a resume. What does Mr. Colson do for a living? Special counsel to the President of the United States. Nixon?
town. But when we get back home, we're not working for Enzo anymore. Yeah, but... I mean, he's our uncle, his family here. He doesn't care about us, Tom. Well, so what are we gonna do? We'll figure something out. You and me. All he had in his safe deposit box was an album of baseball cards. He estimates a value between two and three hundred dollars. Baseball cards. Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio, so on and so forth. He said he would try and recollect all the cards he had and send me a complete list. We're supposed to believe that, sir. That he had an album full of baseball cards in a safe deposit box three thousand miles away. Well, Howard, we have to take Mr. Colson at his word. That's all we can do at the moment. I'd like to talk to Mr. Colson, if that's okay with you, sir. No, I'm afraid not. But neither you or anyone on your team is to have any contact with Mr. Colson. Is that clear? How am I supposed to come to Sometimes smoking guns are too hot to handle, Howard. You have to give them time to cool down. Cool down. You read the Washington Post, Howard? No, sir. You should. It's an article by a couple of young reporters, Woodward and Bernstein. You might find it interesting. Bye for now, Howard. Give me the Washington Post. Tag an article by Woodward and Bernstein. Jerry, you see this? Yes, sir. I want each and every house on the entire hillside checked out door to door, and I want it done today. Looks like we drilled a dry hole. Maybe I was wrong about that mirror. The house was rented under the name Steve McQueen. That has to mean something. Female intuition should be admissible evidence. Karen had great instincts, too. Out of Youngstown, Ohio. Enzo Rotello, Paul Callahan, and Raymond Darrow. It's only three suspects. We found five sets of fingerprints. Yeah, well, I've got our guys working on it in double shifts around the clock. Excellent work. We still have uh, two sets of fingerprints we haven't ID'd yet, sir. You will. All right, let me buy you a cup of coffee. You look like you could use one. You were up in Sacramento before you came to Santa Ana, weren't you? Yes, sir. In the Boise. In Minneapolis before that, amongst many others. Well, I think it's time you had your final transfer. It's time you came to Washington, D.C. Sir? I need a man who can work the halls of power without being awestruck by the architecture, Howard. Tell me, how are you and the missus getting on these days? I'm working things out. Glad to hear that. And how would she feel if I asked you to move your family to Washington? She wouldn't like it, but for this, I think she'd understand. Good. You got three weeks. 
Three weeks. That should be ample time for you to finish up with this case. You have to hand it to them, these fellows from Youngstown. They certainly upset the apple cart, didn't they? And whose apple cart was that, sir? Well, you'll have to ask them what they were looking for and who it belonged to. That way you can say you didn't hear it from me, which you haven't. You'll give us something to talk about when you get to Washington, D.C. They flew from Cleveland to Los Angeles under their real names. Enzo Rotello, Paul Callahan, Ray Darrow, and two brothers, Perry and Tommy Barber. Tommy served a tour in Vietnam. We tracked his prints to the U.S. Army database. In here, Barber? We got his photo? There's nothing in our system. He's probably the fifth set of prints that we haven't ID'd yet. But take a look at this. Hertz rented a 1972 Cadillac DeVille to a customer named Steve McQueen. The car was paid for in $100 bills and returned in Las Vegas. So they all escaped to Las Vegas? Maybe not all. A neighbor reported seeing two men getting picked up in a cab outside of the vacation house. So I checked the local taxi logs. And guess who I found? Steve McQueen. The driver got a hell of a tip, too. $100 bill. And nobody knows about this but you and me? Just you and me, sir. OK. I want to inspect that taxi cab myself. Don't let anybody touch it. Yes, sir. You see it? Yes. OK. Let's put out a bulletin to all the local PDs nationwide uh, for misdemeanor oh. fingerprints. See if we can't tag this Harry J. Barber. And if we can't find him, find me Steve McQueen. Is it always like that, or do you get used to it? It's always like that. How did I not notice this? Because whenever it got bad, I, I got really scared. I pretended I was someone else. Someone that could keep the cool no matter what, even if the cops showed up. Let me guess. Steve McQueen. 41 outstanding speeding tickets, all paid two weeks before the heist. Did a year-long stint in juvie. That's all we've got on him at the moment. Let's call the Cleveland office. Tell him it's showtime. Here's your price. You coming? Harry Bob. Harry who? It's just a matter of time. A matter of time. Let's see about that. Let's go. 
<laughs> or even some suggested resigning. Any suggestion that <laughs> this president is ever going to leave this office until he was continues to do the job and finishes the job he was elected to do, anyone who suggests that, that's just plain poppycock. Two of the same. Thank you. I'm going to the store. You want anything? More baseball cards. Okay, tell me. <laughs> I love you, Harry. Where'd that come from? I don't know. Love you too, Tommy. That was the last time I saw my little brother. I left Youngstown that day and I've been running ever since. But I'm done running now, Molly. No, you're not. Well, go to Mexico. I called your Kevin. father this morning. He'll be here any minute. No, come on. Molly, Molly, what are you? Molly, hey, where are you going? My motorcycle. You're gonna ride it all the way to Mexico? Canada, it's only five hours at the border. You know anyone in Toronto? No, and neither do you. Okay, hey, then whatever, we'll go on the run like Bonnie and Clyde. Wait a minute, didn't Bonnie and Clyde get shot to death? Oh yeah. He's not gonna run, is he? He's been chasing this guy for a long time. He's not going anywhere. Tell your men to stand up. Stand down! No more lies. That's my new rule. for you forever. About five to ten years. <laughs> it's time to go, Harry. You really think there's happily ever after for people like us? They don't always say that. To Stephen McQueen. 
in the Thomas Crown Affair.